Hi, my name is Mackenzie Joy, and I'm going to be showing you how to use the Formative platform. So uh, Formative is located in my backpack, so you can just, oops, search it here. And this is a website that I use for quizzes, testing, um, assignments in class. And it's a really great website um, because it gives you a lot of good reports, um, a lot of great data on your students. So first I'm going to show you just how to create um, a formative. So on your home, you can go to create, uh, click on formative. And then it pulls you up with this uh, here. You can give it a title. So we'll call this test. And then down here, you can add any uh, questions or content. Or my favorite thing is import from Google Drive. So if you click import from Google Drive, it'll actually link to your drive. And it gives you the option to upload images, documents, PDFs, but I like the presentation feature. So let's just use my unit three warm up slides for my calculus class. There's only a couple there so far. So what's cool about this is you can create your entire quiz, the questions, um, just as a PowerPoint. I like it because um, Google Slides is a lot more user friendly than some of these other websites, especially for, my, for math text. Um, so I'm gonna deselect the title and then just click add three images. And then it uploads these questions as images. So as the student is taking the test, this is kind of the material. And then over here, you can go in and add questions. So like for this one, the question was to find the derivative of f of x and g of x. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to do numeric because the students need to be able to type um, like mathematical math symbols. So the question would be find the derivatives. And then I can add a correct answer and I can use the math type. And then here you can do allow partial credit, allow partial match. You can make it case sensitive if you need. You can require students to show your work, show their work. And then that gives them the ability to draw on the question. You can also add a hint to help the students out. And one of the things I like about formative is that if I wanted to separate this into two questions, I could say find the derivative of f of x for this one. And then I could go and add another question still within the same material. So I could go and do another numeric question and say find the derivative of g of x. And then they would have to answer them both in there. But then as the student scrolls between the two questions on the screen, it keeps the material here for them. So another way that you can generate questions um, is you can just go down here to create. And then I like to start with content types and I like the paired passages option. So for paired passages, um, you can go over here and just type your full question or passage or whatever it is. You can upload um, material as well. And then you can put multiple questions to go with it. So you might have a multiple choice question to go with your passage, um, a multiple selection. And for multiple selection, I like to do allow partial credit. And it even has an option whether you subtract points for incorrect answers or not. You could do a free response, all of that. Um, you can also generate questions from just a simple or a single PowerPoint slide from an image, you can embed audio. They have lots of different types of questions here. I like the matching one. Um, you can pair up your matching um, vocab and definition or whatever it is that they need to match. Um, and then it'll scramble them for the students. You can make them resequence things. So this is a good in math. If you wanna have them order things from least to greatest or something like that, you can put your sequence in here. Um, they also have an AI feature, um, but you can go to auto-generate. And for math, it's not the best with its um, like mathematical typing yet. I think it's going to get better. But an example might be um, find derivative using product rule, if that's what I wanted to do. I'd go to select my grades, and I'm going to put 11th and 12th. 
subject, I'll put calculus. Difficulty, let's say medium. And then let's see what it generates. It takes just a second. And like I said, it's not great with the math type, so you might have to edit that in some way. Um, but it does do a pretty good job of coming up with, um, from what I, yeah, all of these examples do involve the product rule. So the AI feature, um, it needs some, it, it needs some work, but it, it's pretty good so far and it might work better for content besides math. Um, and then one of the best things about formative besides like creating these, um, tests is the data you get. So over here. Um, well, first of all, you have to assign it to a class. So you assign and then it pulls in all of your um, rosters for you. So let's say I wanted to assign it just to my, let's do my advisement. Assign the formative. Then I see all the students' names over here. Up here with this little um, lightning bolt, I can click on it. I can pause it, which means students are not able to access it. It should show up when it refreshes. Yeah, so students are not able to access it right now, but then I can resume it. I can force all submissions. I can change the settings uh, to have a due date, a time limit. I can give them multiple attempts. I can choose whether to show them afterwards, their score. Display each item on a separate page. That's when it's cool to use that um, paired passage feature because it keeps you on the same page as the material you need. Display questions in a random order is great to help uh, prevent cheating. You can also do a secure exam browser mode if you have the, um, the more expensive version, I believe. Um, yes, yeah, so you can change all of those settings and you can apply them to all of your classes. You can copy the link and put it in your Google Classroom as well. And then you can see students' progress as they're taking the test or quiz. So each student's progress will show up here. It'll be green if they get it right, red if they get it wrong, yellow for partial. And if it's gray, that means you have to go in and grade some um, student response. Then once, ever, or once you're ready for the data, you can go to summary. And I can't see it because I don't have any data in this one. But let's look at my reports. So if I go to home and click on reports, I can change the um, range that I wanna see to last 90 days, click run report. And then up here are all the assignments that I've given on formative. These are each of my rosters separated. It's nice that it separates the gifted and other roster so you can compare your data better. And then it has the scores for each of these. So something cool is that you can actually tag standards for the questions that this um, question covers. So like for this one, um, exponential functions, it covers this standard and it has the Georgia sta algebra standards loaded in here. So you can click add standard, search for um, Georgia, choose your subject, choose your standards. And then once you have these standards tagged for your questions, um, like here's another one, cover standard 3.2, then when you get to your report, you can look at the data by the standard. So if I'm back in my report and I click standards, I can see that students are doing fairly well on the data and statistical reasoning standard. And then maybe some classes are doing a little worse or a little better on this one. And it'll also track them throughout, um, like over time. So if you go to progress, last 90 days and run report, this will tell you how, how students have been performing on specific standards over time. You can also check the library on formative to find things that other people have created. I know for the math um, and activities, we have the APS high school math folder um, that all math teachers have access to. We also have district assessments. Um, but you can also look at the library to just see anything that people have posted on formative. You can search the title. So might look up calculus. And here's a calculus folder. And we have derivatives, limits, derivatives. And I can copy any of these formatives, add this formative. It'll go to my list. And then I can assign it to my classes.